and welcome back to Bigish Theories. In today's video, we'd like to talk about Red Velvet's film My Rhythm, focusing on a little breakdown and analysis of the lyrics, the music video, and the art referenced in it to see what they can tell us about the incredible concept of this comeback. Film My Rhythm is a song that celebrates the arrival of spring by inviting the audience into a world of dream where we can get lost into their rhythm. This is a track that samples air on the G-string by Sebastian Bach, and the classical instrumental used in the song is meant to evoke a timeless and elegant feel that balances the mysterious and intense vibe of the modern beat. Now, much like what the title of the album implies, this comeback is the latest installment of the Rave Festival series. This is a project that first began back in 2019 with Day One and Zimza Labim, and as you probably know, the title is actually a wordplay between the French word for dream and the first syllables of the words Red Velvet. This means that the Rave Festival is essentially a dream festival where the girls lead us into a fantasy world full of wonder and mystery. Every time this celebration takes on a new form that is always is different from the next, and this time around is no different, because this time around, the film I read them invites us into a theatrical ball where we can imagine anything and get lost into the hypnotizing feeling awakened by their music. You see, as they explain themselves in the showcase, Film My Rhythm was actually shot like an opera set in a dream. It's like a play that takes place in another dimension, if you will, and as we'll see in a second, the story told in this play is portrayed with works of art that are referenced throughout the video as a whole. Now, the fact that the video is structured like a moving artwork is actually evident since the very beginning, because in the opening, the members are introduced through shots directly inspired by different paintings. The scene with Sugi on a ladder, for instance, is very reminiscent of the painting Curiosity by Eugene de Blas. Irene on the swing seems to have been inspired by the swing by Fragonard, while Joe in the water is a direct callback to Ophelia by Millet. This shot with Yere and Wendy looking at Joy, on the other hand, is a perfect adaptation of this painting by John William Waterhouse called Names Finding the Head of Orpheus. You can see Joy playing the role of Orpheus, Yere and Wendy as the names, and the setting of the video blending almost perfectly with the original painting. As it turns out, moreover, this attention to detail also continues in the rest of the video because as the story unfolds, the visuals reference other paintings as well. This shot of Irene and Sulgi, for instance, was inspired by Woman with a Parasol by Claude Monet. The scene of Yeri and Sugi picking strawberries instead references the painting Gather Your Rosebuds Why You May by Waterhouse. Yeri and Sugi match the poses of the two girls in the foreground, and Joy even mirrors the lady in purple picking flowers in the background. When spring finally comes and Yeri is born out of the egg, moreover, the video seems to reference The Birth of Venus by Botticelli. In both cases, you can see the wind blowing, the pink flowers flying around, and the beautiful goddess being born on the the water in a similar pose. The painting that inspired the concept the most, however, is by far the garden of Earthly Delights by Hieronymus Bosch. Now, this painting is actually a triptych, meaning that it's a work of art painted on three different pieces of wood that are then hinged together in order to form a foldable artwork. When you close it, you see this, and when you open it, the garden is revealed in all its glory. Depending on the section, the painting portrays three different scenes set in three different realms connected to one another. The left panel shows shows the Garden of Eden and God presenting Eve to Adam. The central panel represents Earth, which is just as beautiful but also filled with people overcome by pleasure, while the panel on the right represents Hell and the punishment that sinful humans have to endure. Now, if you actually pay attention to it, this painting is wild, because the more you look at it, the more you notice stuff going on. It's chaotic, grotesque, but at the same time, it's also beautiful and fascinating, and Film My Rhythm took full advantage of this duality by adapting the visuals to the video as a whole. You see, if we look at the landscape, the majority of the scenes are actually inspired by this painting. The structure that we see in heaven, for instance, is referenced in the background of the dancing, but most importantly, right at the end, we're Sugi flies into it in the shape of an owl. This is especially relevant because in the painting the structure is inhabited by an owl as well, but as you can see on screen, the main inspiration for Sugi's animal form is actually found in a specific detail of the central panel. Speaking of which, this central section is actually full of elements that can be found in the video as well. Much like in the MV, for instance, we see that in the center a lot of people are eating strawberries, and much like in the MV, some of these strawberries are exceptionally large in size. 
If in this scene Yeri is on water, in a pink cracked sphere next to a blue flower, moreover, in the painting we see a couple on water, in a pink cracked fruit, and next to a blue flower. On the side we can spot giant birds that look very similar to the ones that we see next to the girls, and in this painted shot we can see the landscape looking exactly like the central panel down to the smallest detail. On top of that, another hidden reference that we can find is actually connected to the scene of Joy interacting with the magical sphere brought by the bird. In the central section we see a similar scene where a similar bird is holding a fruit in the very same way. Most importantly, the bird is hovering over a pink flower that looks remarkably like Joy's. This however is not even the half of it, because if we move to the right panel set in hell, then we can notice a lot of callbacks in the scene set in the winter. The most obvious reference that we can find is none other than the entity at the center, which is a half-human that is usually referred to as the tree man. As we can see from this parallel right here, this is the main inspiration behind the winter giant featured in the video, and if right at the end the red velvet are sitting at a table inside of his stomach, in the painting we see people sitting at a table inside of the tree man. Looking even closer moreover, we can also notice that the arms of this entity are shaped like trees that are very similar to the one that Wendy comes out of in the video. Then we see people on boats like Irene, and also people falling into the frozen lake like it happens to Wendy midway through. During in the painted montage, moreover, we can also spot the same hellish landscape in the background, and last but not least, Sulgi is actually sitting on a throne that is very similar to the one of the Prince of Hell. As you can see, all of these references help create a fantastical narrative that is fascinating and grotesque at the same time. Since this video is portrayed like an opera, the lyrics mention a play, and the concept photos hinted at ballet, however, I would also like to add another possible theatrical reference, this time being none other than the Swan Lake. Now this is a ballet that was already hinted at back in Psycho, because back then the video had some visual callbacks to Black Swan, which in turn is a movie where this ballet is front and center. Much like in Psycho, however, I think that these references are mainly visual ones, in the sense that even if they used the aesthetic of the Swan Lake, they didn't necessarily follow the story bit by bit. You see, the Swan Lake follows the story of Odette, a princess that together with other maidens is cursed to live as a swan during the day and as a human during the night. This is a curse that was casted by the evil Rothbart, which is a sorcerer that mostly appears in the shape of an owl. The only way to break the spell is for somebody who's never loved before to swear eternal love to Odette, and at the beginning things are looking good when Siegfried comes along. Now Siegfried here is a prince that just turned 21, and having reached adulthood is set to marry a woman among those that will be presented to him at a ball. Distraught by the idea that he is unable to marry for love, the prince goes to the lake for a hunt, when all of a sudden he witnesses Odette transforming back into a human. When the two meet each other, they immediately fall in love. The prince swears eternal love to the princess, and he promises to marry her, but the evil Rothbart has completely different plans. The night of the ball, the wizard transforms his daughter Odile to make her look exactly like Odette, so you have Odette as the white swan back at the lake, and Odile as the black swan attending the ball to seduce the prince. Even if Odette eventually arrives arrives at the castle, the prince doesn't see her in time and swears to marry Odile, thus breaking the promise that he made to Odette. This betrayal will soon prove to have terrible consequences, because even if the prince betrayed Odette by mistake, his actions lead her to be cursed forever. Knowing her fate, Odette chooses to drown herself into the lake, and the prince actually chooses to die with her. Even if the two lovers die, however, the prince's final sacrifice essentially proved that his love was real, so the curse breaks, the wizard dies, and the couple lives on ascending to heaven. Now as you can see, the video doesn't exactly follow this narrative bit by bit, but throughout the MV we do see some visual callbacks to the story as a whole. For one, the video is mostly set on a lake, and much like in the story, the lyrics mention a ball that also takes place during Yeri's scenes. Flower Joy blooming during the night, on the other hand, is very reminiscent of Odette regaining human form after sunset. In this shot right here, moreover, the wings of the bird even look like they belong to Joy herself, and this visual, together with the fact that Joy is enchanted by a bird, heavily remind of Odette being cursed by Rothbart in the shape of an owl. 
And speaking of rough part, the wizard is actually referenced through Sugi, who plays the role of an entity that can transform into an owl just as well. Then we have Irene dressed in black, offering the strawberries to the giant, which can be compared to the black swan Odile seducing the prince. And last but not least, Wendy foreshadows the tragic destiny of the two lovers, because she falls into the lake like Odette and the prince do at the end. As you can see, even if it's not exactly faithful to the original version, the video does reference the Swan Lake quite a lot, and together with the other references, film and rhythm create a narrative that mixes all these sources together. When it comes to the actual plot of DMV, however, understanding what is going on is easier said than done. The video is literally a moving painting that portrays a dream opera, so the events that we see are intentionally left ambiguous. After all, the whole point of the song is to follow the rhythm, get lost in the melody, and embrace the chaos in a night of freedom and delight. It's about them challenging the boundaries of reality, leading the audience in a new direction, and celebrating in a festival where everybody is free to imagine whatever they like. Like any dream, film and rhythm is open to interpretation, or can have no interpretation at all, because to be honest with you, we don't need to understand it in order to appreciate its artistry. Since we're already here, however, I might as well give you my two cents and tell you my personal interpretation, and if it happens to be different from yours, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments down below. Now, the first big clue that the girls gave us is that the main theme of the story revolves around the arrival of spring, and spring being a season of new beginnings. According to Yeri, the concept heavily relies on contrast. It's day versus night, as well as spring versus winter, and in the story some members want to go to spring, while others want to stay in winter. Now, if we consider the settings and the outfits, at first glance it would seem that Yeri and Joy are the ones who wish for spring, while the other three are those who want to stay in winter. In my opinion, however, this is not exactly the case, because the way I see it, Sug is the one who wants to stay in winter, Irene and Wendy are those who wish for spring, while Joy and Yeri actually represent spring itself. Ok, hear me out. At the beginning of the dream opera, the first thing that we see is Sugi on the throne. As I mentioned before, in the original painting this is the throne of the Prince of Hell, but in the video we are not in Hell, but rather in winter. Since Sugi is looking over a frozen landscape only inhabited by crows, this makes me think that she is possibly playing the role of the Queen of Winter reigning over a frozen kingdom. If this is the case, then it makes sense that she doesn't want spring to come, because she is essentially reigning over another season. As we see right after, however, spring comes anyway, and this is where Joy comes into play. As soon as the song starts, Joy the flower starts to bloom, and even if at this point it's still night, and Irene is still navigating the frozen landscape, Joy represents the first indication that spring is around the corner. She's the first flower to bloom, and the first sign that a new beginning is finally approaching, and before you know it, this change actually begins to spread all over. At the court of the Winter Queen, for instance, one of the crows suddenly appears with a plate full of straw strawberries, which is a seasonal fruit that ripens in spring. At the same time, the video introduces us to Yeri, who is wearing a crown of flowers and fruit while sitting in a cracked sphere that looks very much like an egg. Now, this is very important, I think, because Yeri is the only other character wearing a crown besides Sugi. In my opinion, if Sugi is the queen of winter, then Yeri is the queen of spring about to be born. Joy blooming in the night was the very first crack that anticipated her birth, and even if at the beginning she is not out yet, the call for birds of spring are already awakening to welcome her arrival. This event also leads Wendy to come out of her hiding to see what's going on. As I mentioned earlier, I think that she is one of the characters that is wishing for spring, so as soon as things start to change, she basically emerges from her hibernation. If you look closely, behind her you can see flowers finally blooming, but as she steps on the frozen lake, a shiny drop falls from the sky that's cracking the ice. Because of that, Wendy ends up falling into the lake, but after a moment we realize that a spring bird is looking out for her, and the most important a giant strawberry is hiding under the surface. Now, the way I see it, the sheer size of that strawberry might actually foreshadow the idea that even if right now winter is still around, a huge spring is lingering and about to explode in all its glory. In order to accomplish this, however, we first need to go back to Joy, who in the meantime is holding what seems to be the first light of spring. When she freezes it, a bird comes back with a fruit with the same color, and when she touches it, the fruit explodes, finally bringing the light of day. Fittingly enough, the arrival of daylight is also overlapped with 
with an explosion of flowers that seemingly announces the birth of Yeri as the Queen of Spring. In the meantime, moreover, back at the court of the Winter Queen, Sogi herself seems to be seduced by the strawberries, meaning that, despite everything, she eventually gives in and embraces Spring. At the same time, we see Irene offering the strawberries to the giant, and I think that this is the final straw, because when the giant accepts them, the entity ends up dying as a result. In my opinion, I think that the giant might represent none other than Winter itself. The moment Winter accepted the offering of Spring, this season died in order to leave space for the next season to come along, so by the end the girls dine with strawberries instead of the yellow belly of the beast. This would also explain why in the final group shot, Sulgi is actually side-eyeing Yeri instead of being happy like the others. As we see right at the end, with the birth of the Spring Queen, the Winter Queen has been dethroned and she has to momentarily retire in her small yellow house. This might also connect us right back to what the girls were saying about them becoming queens of all seasons. If I'm right about this, then every season will have a queen, and the fifth member might play the role of a queen that embodies all seasons in one. As of right now, it seems that Sulgi is the queen of winter, and Yer is the queen of spring. In my opinion, I think that Joy might be the queen of summer, and Wendy might be the queen of fall, and if this is right, then Irene might end up being the queen of all. Don't know if I'm right or wrong, however, we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.